Hey there. I just want to open up with prayer. So would you pray with me, please? Uh, here we go. You ready? Are you sure? Put praying hands down in the comments when you're ready. A couple seconds. There we go. All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. This morning we lift you up. Today we lift you up with all that we have, all that we are, and all that we hope for. Lord Jesus, we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Will you worship with us? Raise hands. Uh, however you do, let's, let's go.
praise your holy name. Let's just soak him in this moment. Just that his name, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. His name, his name brings healing. His name brings hope. His name brings life. Just as me. Jesus, there is no other name like you, like yours. This moment we lift you up and we praise your holy name. Praise your holy name, Jesus. God, I ask that you would have your way, that you would be honored and glorified in all that's said and done in this moment. Pray that you bring uh, clarity to our hearts, that you bring life change, that you draw us deeper into you. I pray that you begin to this moment to just speak to each and every one of our hearts exactly where we're at, exactly where we're facing, exactly where we're feeling and going through all the emotions. God, I ask that you would just begin to speak to hearts that are far from you. Whatever obstacles, whatever uh, barriers, uh, whatever distancing, uh, I pray that you would uh, continue to overcome them and that you would speak exactly to exactly what is uh, broken, hurting, whatever obstacle there is. Lord Jesus, draw us to you like never before. In this moment, we open our hearts to your word, to your presence, to your grace, to your mercy, to your truth. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are 100% grace and 100% truth. <laughs> speak to us. Speak in us. Speak through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John chapter 15. But before we get there, I wanted to talk about uh, friends. So uh, growing up, I had this black BMX bike with yellow star mag wheels. And in this town that I lived in was Mapton. And I had got this bike and I didn't know how to ride it. It was like uh, uh, my mom and her boyfriend were saying, okay, it's time to start learning how to ride a bike. So they get me this bike, knowing that I, we would figure it out together, right? So I, before, um, I'm pretty similar to who I <laughs> am now as what I was then, is, is I was really interested in making friends. Uh, so, I took that bike and I couldn't ride it. And I took that bike, this black BMX bike with yellow star mag wheels, so awesome. It was the best bike ever. In fact, it still is my most favoritist bike ever in the world. Uh, and I know favoritist is not a word, but it's still my most favoritist. And I would take this bike and, and it was a little bit taller than me. And so I would, walk this bike around town, uh, the town of Mapton. Now, Mapton is humongous. There are millions of people that live in Mapton, and especially at this time. Okay, Mapton's not humongous. It never has been. When I lived there, there was one paved road. The rest were dirt roads, and everything, we were surrounded by hop fields, and we would go and we collect uh, tadpoles in the, uh, in the ditches, and ride our bikes in the dirt and stuff like that. But this is before I knew how to ride a bike. So we take this, I would take this bike and I'd walk it around and I would see somebody and I'd say, hey, Jim Bob, you wanna ride my bike? And 
and uh, Jim Bob would uh, come up and he would say, really? You want me to ride your bike? And I would say, yeah! And he would get on his, my bike, not his bike, my bike, and he'd ride it around. And, I, and then he'd give it back to me when he's done. And I'm like, isn't that awesome? And over and over again, hey, Javier, you want to ride my bike? And Javier would say, yeah, I want to ride your bike and ride my bike. And, and so then bring it back to me. And, and these are all bigger kids that knew how to ride. And, and really what I was doing is I was just trying to make friends. Uh, I couldn't ride this bike. But they could, and it was so awesome watching them do this. And this idea of friendship is interesting because when we look at this picture of friends, uh, we, we have different types of friends, right? In, in this case, me riding my bike, it, they weren't my friends. They didn't really know me well, but they wanted to ride my bike and I wanted them to ride my bike. And so it was kind of like a, a transaction almost. Uh, and so, and then, you know, we never even started up conversation. We kind of did, but didn't really go deeper than that. And, and so friendship is interesting. And this, this idea of friendship, uh, for me, it, at times is kind of warped, right? So, so I look at this idea, and even the song that we just sang earlier, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, it, it kind of seems odd <laughs> because I I look at this friendship and I look at it from the wrong perspective I think I think from God's perspective it is it's different what the way we describe friendship and the way God describes friendship it's different how could I be friends with Jesus now the premise of scripture it says that Jesus is all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. That, and in fact, in John, the book of John, it said, has this picture that, that God stepped out of heaven, that he became flesh, right? Flesh and bones, just like you and I, and he dwelt among us. Now, if we look at this picture, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God becomes part of his creation. So, so when we look at the Bible, it's, it says that, that God designed us, that, that God designed all things, all good gifts are from God, right? So in fact, the Bible says that he knitted us together in our mother's womb. Uh, it also says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. It says that, that we are made in the image or the likeness of God. And it's just so, so when we, when we get back and go, okay, so that God, that God that, that, uh, that out of nothing created all things, just at the sound of his voice. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I tried to make stuff and sometimes it turns out the most of the time it's an epic fail, right? So it's like those Pinterest things that you see this recipe or this great design and then you go and make it and it's just an utter failure because something's off, something's wrong. That seems to be me. But for me, in order for me to make something, I have to take all kinds of stuff and put it together to make it. So I have to make stuff out of already made stuff, right? If I'm going to bake a cake, I need flour, sugar, and all that other stuff. I need the stuff. But God didn't do that. God created out of nothing. And just let there be light. And then there was the sun and the stars and, and all things that have light. Wow, just at the sound of his voice. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And so this very God, this all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, creator of all things, uh, this good God, this gracious God, uh, stepped out of heaven and became a part of his creation. Why? Why would he do such a thing? So that he could know, so that we could know him so that we could choose him, so that we could walk in relationship with him, 
so that we could have heaven, so that we could uh, defeat sin in our lives. I mean, because we see this Jesus uh, stepping out of heaven, becoming a part of his creation, dependent upon his creation, a baby, living a sinless life. There was no sin in him. And, and you've heard me say this before. Sin is going against the word of God, the Bible, the way of God, and the will of God. And so Jesus followed the word of God, the way of God, and the will of God his whole life perfectly. And then, and then Jesus, perfect, declared innocent, hung on a cross, and then three days later rose from the grave. Why? So that we could have a relationship with God. He spanned that gap. And so out of the book of John is where we're going. And uh, John chapter 15, this idea of friendship is hard for me because uh, how could an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God be my friend? What does that look like? And how do I live like that? And here's, here's, here's my bias, is that Jesus is everything to me. He, he, he has healed me a number of times. He saved me. What I mean by he saved me, he, I was literally against him and at war with him. I was going my own direction and he continued to pursue me and he used people around me to share Jesus with me. And so I'm completely biased in this message because Jesus is my all in all, my, my, my only hope. <laughs> He's everything to me. He is my best friend. So uh, when I look at this and when I picture this, uh, and even picturing just him being my friend is kind of mind boggling and, and sometimes uh, overwhelming because I'm friends with Jesus. Verse 9. So uh, 15 verse 9. So we're looking at this, this piece of scripture here and Jesus before this is saying that I I, I am the true vine. What that means is that all life comes from him, right? And my father is a garden and he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So it's this picture of this idea that, that he, we're a growing, living being. And when we're in him, when we abide in him, when we're in relationship with him, when we're in friendship with him, uh, uh, what happens is that we produce fruit. And the things in our lives, and sometimes our lives that don't produce fruit, he removes, right? Verse four says this, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So we see this picture of remain. So and that idea is abide. So not only does God say that, that when we choose him, when we come into relationship with him, that we automatically bear fruit, right? But also says that we're to abide, to live in. That word abide, uh, like an abode, is similar, right? It's a home. So I abide in him. I live in him. I walk and move in him. And so that's an interesting perspective. So now, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, this is Jesus saying it, because it's in red. Uh, <laughs> as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Okay, so, so that makes sense. So, so in order for me to, to remain in Christ is that I obey him, right? In order for me to remain in this relationship, I, I obey him. Okay, so verse 9, uh, just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and you and that your joy may be complete. So perfect joy 
Uh, perfect wholeness comes from Christ. Verse 12, my command is this, love each other that I, as I have loved you. Love each other as I have loved you. And also, I think it's First John, it says, they will know that you're my followers or my disciples. They're, they'll know that you're my peeps. They're my people or my friends by your love one for another. Wow, who's they? Everybody that's not in relationship with Christ will notice, hey, my love for other believers it will demonstrate God's love to other people, right? Verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Again, love each other. I, that verse, greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. Wow. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. See, I know uh, that Jesus is my friend because he laid down his life for me. And I demonstrate that by laying down my life for others. Right? I, I show, I, I get this picture of, of me growing up and, and I've had all kinds of different friend groups, right? And I don't know about you, but in, um, in high school we had, uh, we had the stoners. Uh, I don't know if they still have the stoners. Uh, we had the jocks. We had the preppies. Uh, we had the wannabes. <laughs> Just to name a few, and each one had different characteristics, and you knew, oh yeah, that's they hang out with each other, and they're they have this in common, right? And so when we look at this idea of friends uh, and friends of Jesus that were friends of Him, we should have things in common, right? It says that. We'll lay down our lives for one another. So that's what we have in common. Our willingness to give up my rights for my responsibilities. And what that means is that, that I look at others and I care for them. We often say, see a need, meet a need. See a need, meet a need. So I see that someone has a need. And so I serve them in that need. See a need, meet a need. And what was interesting is, is not only that, but uh, it also says, my command is this, that you love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. So, so when we look at this picture and this idea of friends, uh, that cat has never come up to me before, just to get distracted a little bit. But uh, this idea of friends, woo! <laughs> Way to go, D. Okay, so this idea of friends is this idea that, that these are the commonalities that are friends of Jesus, right? That they lay down their life for one another. They're, they're called to lay down their life for one another. They're, they're chosen, right? That, that, we, that Jesus chooses us. I don't know about you, but I've played tons of kickball games. I remember going into a playground and then roll the ball and you just kick it as far as you could and go way out and then you just run the bases. Well, I had this difficulty with uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and still, 
today I still have the same difficulty. It's this idea of so when we play kickball, the guy rolls the ball at you and you watch the ball come towards you and you just kick it. Well, I would get distracted easily. And so uh, as the ball sometimes would come at me, I'd see this and I'd go, oh, isn't that nice? And so what happened was I would get chosen uh, oftentimes last. I could run the bases like nobody's business. I could run around through the bases like nobody's business. But sometimes I would get standing on those bases and I'd get distracted. So I was often the last guy to get picked, even though I was super fast. Uh, <laughs> and so, so when we see this idea in this picture, it says that Jesus chooses us. And Jesus chose us. That, that we were picked last. I mean, so if we look at this picture even greater in John 3.16, I think you've heard this. I know you've seen it at the football games or whatever. It says, John 3.16, it says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, this is Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So, so what that verse says, it says, for God so loved the world. Hmm. Is that some people? Is that just the preppies and the jocks? Uh, is it just the preppies, jocks, and stoners? It is all people. It says, oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, the, the whole world, not just one person or this person. And so what that verse tells me, what that picture shows us, should show us that we're all chosen by God. He chose us. He wants us to be his friends. He wants us to live for him, to honor him. And so back to the characteristics. We saw the characteristics, right? That, that those that, that love me, those that are my friends, they will love one another. They'll lay down their lives for one another. Those, those that are my friends, they will obey my commands. Those that are my friends are chosen, they're commanded, and they're called. So when we look at this picture of Jesus is my friend, we look at this idea uh, uh, that he chooses us, that he calls us. And then he commands us. And see, when we see this big picture that all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God wants to be our friend, it's this picture of grace. Because I know I don't deserve that. But God doesn't just give his son to give me a relationship. I mean, give me life to save me from hell but to walk in relationship with him. He goes beyond. See, God is always good. He's always just. He's always great. So when we see this picture, that Jesus is not only all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God, but he calls us. He calls us to himself. He, he chooses us. Hey, I'm going to pick you. Wait, wait, you shouldn't pick me. Right? You shouldn't. But he calls us and he chooses us. And then this characteristic that, that we see over and over again for people that believe in Jesus is this idea that we obey what he's commanded, which goes back to the called, called part, right? We saw that, that he said that... that uh, you're no longer servants because I've, I've revealed my father's business to you. And what's his father's business? What's Jesus's desire for you and I? Is that he would come to, we would come to know him and live for him. Jesus came to not make us, not turn us from bad people to good people, but to give us life, to give us hope to give us relationship, to, to uh, overcome sin, to pay a penalty that you and I deserved. 
And so when we believe him, when we choose him, which he's already chosen us, he calls us, he empowers us to walk in that. Are you following me? So these characteristics of the friends of Jesus, they are called. They know their father's business. And they don't just know it, but they walk in it. They're chosen. That means is that they've been picked. They've been designed. You've been designed. I've been designed for this very moment, for this very reason, for this very purpose. And not only does he design us, but the Bible says that he gives us the Holy Spirit who empowers us to do things that we can't do because the Holy Spirit is fully God as well. <laughs> and he convicts, he draws people to him, he changes, he heals, he makes whole, he gives new life and new heart. Wow. He commanded. So when we look at this picture of Jesus being our friend, we should look at this picture that we're called, that we're chosen, that God chooses everybody, and all we have to do is just choose him, and that we're commanded to live and walk this out. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And so uh, in that, I don't know about you, but as I see my friends, uh, I just moved six hours away from piles and piles of friends. In fact, if, if you're here this morning from the coast, <laughs> which is the other side of the mountains, would you just say, hey, the coast, represent. And if you're, on, if you're here on this side of the mountains, on the east side, east side, just go ahead and put that in the comments. That'd be fun. Uh, but that, this idea that I, I moved away from my friends, and you know what I'm, I'm finding myself doing? Is I'm calling them and talking to them and, and trying to engage them at times. And so this idea of friendship means that it's a relationship. It means that I talk to, that I hang out with, that I engage. And so when we come into relationship with Jesus, it's exactly the same. We just add fancy words like prayer. <laughs> and that just means that I'm talking to God that I'm listening to him, that I, I'm walking with him. And that's that idea of commands that obey my commands, right? That, that I'll get to know him better, that I'll engage with him. Uh, sometimes I think that we go back to that same story of me and my black BMX bike with the yellow mag wheels. I, I was walking my bike around so that people would, uh, be my friend, <laughs> they would choose me, so to speak. Uh, and then I would let them ride it, and I would, yeah, this is awesome. I watch them ride around, and they bring me back my bike. But I didn't, at that moment, I didn't enjoy the bike myself. I kind of did, but it was through other people. But I didn't, I didn't really know them. And I wonder how many of us this morning are in that same spot. We think that God is this quid pro quo, right? So if I give God this, he'll give me this. And I guess in some senses it's true. But if I trust God with my life, he gives me hope. He gives me peace and joy. I guess in that sense it is. But sometimes we do things to get out of him. But a friendship with God is not like that. Right? So it's not this idea of we let him ride our bike so that he'll be our friend. It's this idea that he has already chosen us. He's already wants us. He already, it's, it's a different picture, right? I mean, these, this picture of friend of God is that he lays down, they lay down their life, right? They, uh, they, they, uh, I forgot. They lay down their life. What else? Oh, so they forgot too. Uh, so let's look at the word. <laughs> uh, 
greater love has no one that he lays down his life. They, they do what he commands. That's what I was looking for. And, <laughs> and they, they, they walk that he's chosen us. Look at this verse 16. I don't know if I finished this. Verse 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends for everything I've learned. Everything that's, that God is available through God is available to us. Everything that I've learned from the Father I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. So that idea of appointing is this idea that not only he chooses us, but he gives us what's needed for what he's called us to. And you go, appointed you to go and bear fruit that we will produce a fruit that will last because it's not our fruit, but it's what God is producing in us. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, again, to love each other. So we see this picture over and over again in this friendship with God, the characteristic of friends with Jesus are they're called. They, they're called by God. What that means is they, they know their father's business. What's, his father's, what's our father's business? It's to redeem people, to restore people, to save people, to change them, to uh, transform them. And that only way to do that is through Jesus, right? That we're chosen, that, that he didn't just throw you together and throw you out there, that he, he intentionally made you and shaped you for this moment. And he chooses you. And our responsibility is to choose him. And he commands us. And so we're to walk in a way that honors him. And the way that we walk in a way that honors him is that we love one another, that we love others more than we love ourselves. Wow. So would you just take a moment and just bow your head with me? Every head bowed, every eyes closed. You ready? Here we go. So the first question is this. Have you trusted Jesus with your life? Is he your friend? If the answer is no, would you consider trusting him with your heart? And in this moment, while your head is bowed, you say, Jesus, I believe in you. I trust you with my life. And would you in the comments below just put trust? <laughs> we just want to reach out to you and pray with you. Maybe you're here uh, at this moment and you say, you know what? Jesus is my friend, but I haven't gone deeper with it. He's more like an acquaintance. Ah, I know that he's called me. I know that he's chosen me, but I'm not living in a way that, that honors him. But you, in this moment, just begin to ask God for forgiveness. Tell him that you trust him enough to obey him. Would you follow him with all your heart? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for my friends, the tight trust. I pray that you would just continue to speak to their hearts, that you help us to help them grow and walk in this. Lord Jesus, I pray for... Uh, all my friends that have uh, know that they're called and know that they're chosen by you, but aren't living for you. God, if there's a moment, is there, if there's uh, bitterness or anger towards someone else, I pray that you would just begin to speak to their heart about it, that you would restore them. God, that they would walk in your commands, that they would obey you all the way, and they would follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for your friendship. We desperately need you. Thank you that, that not only you come to save us, but you come to walk with us in relationship. Have your way in us and through us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You are dismissed. Bless you guys. A couple announcements. Every day at 3 p.m., 
on our Facebook page. We've got devotionals uh, from a variety of people. Hey, check them out. There is one that really kind of struck me this week, and it was the one on by Nate on grace and mercy. He described it in a way that was really clear and really cool. So if you have an opportunity to listen to that, I'd love for you to do that. And then uh, also, if uh, if you'd like to continue to honor God in your tithes and offerings, there'll be three ways to give, right? You can mail it in, you can show up, or you can give online uh, at our website. I think it's uh, callvilleassembly.com. And uh, the link will be provided at the bottom. But uh, thank you so much for your faithfulness. God is gracious. I can't wait to see your face in person and give you big hugs. Love you guys. Bless you. You are, again, dismissed.